Hello everyone, my name is Michelle Angelo Rocha and I'm a PhD student in Educational Leadership and Policy Studies at the University of South Florida. Today I'm here with Dr. Daniel Tuner. Dr. Daniel Tuner is the author of the chapter Coding System Design and Management, part of the book Analyzing and Interpreting Qualitative Research after the interview that's in production right now with SAGE. Daniel studied at the University of Sheffield, where he gained a PhD in 2008 using qualitative research methods. After working on the qualitative and mixed methods projects at Oxford Brooks and Sheffield Hallam Universities, he was inspired to create Kirkus after wanting to engage participants in the analysis process. He chairs the board of the Edinburgh Remakery was formerly chairperson of the Switch Youth Cafe in his hometown of Maidstone and plays percussion in the local Endeburg Community Orchestra. Thank you so much, Daniel, to come and talk to us today. So could you talk a little bit about your chapter? Um, so the idea behind the chapter, I think, is to give people a sense of um, some of the things that will help manage the coding process. Um, one of the things that it says in the chapter is that obviously Coding is, is, is one way to help you kind of order and structure the data. But for a lot of people, because qualitative data is so varied, um, so diverse, um, it can quickly become just as complicated to manage your coding process as the data itself. And so what we try to do in that chapter is give some ideas about how if you kind of plan ahead, um, you can make sure that you're you're making the most of your qualitative coding um, and that also you, you're able to structure it in a way that makes it easier to use when you come to write up. Um, so it's always kind of focusing. I, th I think people get very excited when they come to analyze qualitative data. Um, they're really excited to kind of get stuck in um, and explore what's in there. Um, and it's easy to, to get a bit um, overwhelmed. And then I think lose focus of the writing up, what, what they've got to do with the data at the end of it. Um, and I think having a kind of management plan is one of the things we talk about, really helps you make sure that the qualitative coding isn't running away with itself um, and you're kind of keeping track of the end goal. Okay. What do you expect uh, people learn from your chapter? Um, I really hope that people are going to learn um, some practical tips and guidelines um, that will help them manage that coding process no matter what kind of approach they're taking. So it doesn't really matter whether they're doing kind of grounded theory or IPA or any particular coding style, um, or if they're doing it using software or um, using paper-based methods. The principles are basically the same. It's about making sure you keep track of the process. So you've got an idea of why you made decisions about creating codes and coding things to certain codes, why you made the decision to maybe change part of the way through to look at a different coding paradigm, because all those things, again, will help kind of with the writing up process. So I hope that people will learn um, just some kind of very basic practical tips, because it's one of those things that doesn't end up in the literature. Um, and I think this is something, there's a really awesome focus that this textbook has taken across all the chapters. It's those things about actually making the qualitative analysis happen that people don't bother documenting in, in papers and textbooks. Um, so I really think it's going to be hopefully really, really something practical that people will learn. Wow, I'm so excited to see this book. And could you talk about what was the challenge to collaborate? I'm sorry, could you say that again? Could you talk a little bit about the challenges that you, that you feel during this process of collaborating? Right. So, so yeah. So one of the other things that's in the the the, the chapter is um, talking about collaboration for qualitative analysis. So um, a lot of the time, people do qualitative research, and they're the kind of the sole analyst, the sole researcher working on the project. But a lot of larger projects and and in kind of postdoc style projects, people start doing a lot more collaborative coding. So there's a lot of good reasons to do that. It may be because you have got so much work that you need to break it up. Um, so different people analyze different interviews, for example. And then the other aspect is that you might want to do some kind of um, member checking or sense checking. So to kind of check the validity of how you're doing the codes and applying those codes. And so then you would want kind of more than one person's input into that. Now, both of those are very different reasons for collaborating with qualitative analysis. 
but there are su significant challenges to actually making that happen. So one of the things that the textbook chapter talks about is the importance of actually considering how you're going to collaborate and managing the people involved in the process. So are they going to be um, working remotely? Are they going to be working face to face? Um, are you going to want them to use a particular software package? Are you going to want them to do it with, with paper? If you're using paper, how are you going to share that between you? Um, so those, those very practical things. But then there's also kind of a lot more kind of setting rules and communication guidelines to make sure that that the collaboration is not just actually doing the work, but it's provoking discussion. So you're talking to each other about what you're finding, what's different, what the challenges are, things you disagree on, because usually those things are as important as the actual, the coding process that you do together itself. So again, I hope it will gonna help people think through some of those things before they start. And hopefully they're gonna take a collaborative approach to coding, make those things um, a lot easier to manage. Well. Could you talk a little bit about your blog? Yeah, sure. So um, so over the last, I think it's six years now, uh, we've been writing a, a blog post uh, basically, I think, t um, every two weeks for the last six years. So there's, there's something like about 160, 170 posts there. Uh, so it's www.quercos.com forward slash blog, um, but they're very general. So they cover different types of qualitative analysis. They cover different qualitative methods. Um, they cover some practical guidelines. Um, we've had what recent ones really popular on kind of doing um, qualitative research online, since that's something a lot of people have had to shift to. And then we've also got things which are more specific about using qualitative software uh, and also obviously guides on to using Quercos. Um, but generally it tries to have stuff that's useful to anyone, you know, whether you're using software or not, um, just to kind of give you a sense of the, all the different um, methods and analytical techniques that you can choose from and then link to references so you can read more if you think that those are the things you're gonna to want to kind of choose and pick up on in your research. Thank you so much, Danielle, for talking to us today. And I can't wait to see your, your, the book and the chapter and read the chapter. Great, thanks so much for talking to me today. Oh, welcome. <laughs>